Hello everyone, it's Mary. Welcome back to the channel. I might be spending way too much time at the Dollar Tree because I found some really cool stuff that I want to share with you, starting with these gems. How cute are they? And they also still have the cutting mats at the Dollar Tree. We'll talk more about that in another video. I want to show you some stencils that I found, not particularly that one, but also some other amazing craft stuff that they have. Now, some of the stuff I've showed you already, a lot of these things that you can find brand name like those right there, the little erasers, um, you can find a brand name for like four bucks and here they're dollar twenty-five. And so I'm just kind of flipping through some of the things I saw there when my, I was on my trip to the Dollar Tree. So let's get started for the first thing here. I have often talked about how you can make anything non-porous a craft mat. So this is a that white mat that I put aside. That's actually a mat from a multimedia mat from Tim Holtz. But I'm going to try this really cool <laughs> magnifying sheet. Not for its magnifying purposes, although I'm getting there in that age where I can't see things close up. But because one side is smooth, and we'll get to that. But if you ever want to remove these stubborn little stickers, just heat them up and likely they will peel right off. So that's what I'm doing here. This uh, clipboard is from the Dollar Tree as well. A lot of this stuff is from the Dollar Tree. I want to show you that crafting does not have to take a lot of money. I'm going to make a few cards with just Dollar Tree items because I want to prove that point. The idea of crafting, the therapy behind it, the piece that you get, you don't have to spend a lot of money for it. So I'm using this magnifying sheet as a craft mat and it's working beautifully. One side is a little textured, one side is really smooth. So I'm just using the smooth side right here. And it's in my clipboard and so I'm just going to keep it there and it's mobile and it's really sturdy enough on its own though you don't really need a clipboard, I just kind of had one. So I'm going to show you here, you can use it as a paint palette too if you have acrylic paints or gouache, anything like that, it works beautifully. And I'm just going to do a little splatters there with some blue and some white just to kind of show you that it really does do a great job. You can also use the cutting boards from Dollar Tree, those are come two to a pack. I would just recommend uh, rounding the corners if you cut them down, um, but they're great as well. Okay, let's move on to our next thing, which is stencils. So this stencil was a hit and a miss, and I'll tell you why. First of all, for $3, you get a ton of images. And I think if you're just starting out in the card making or scrapbooking arena, again, you're going to feel a little bit overwhelmed sometimes by all of the products out there. But if you grabbed up something like this, which gives you a variety of things for just $3, I think you're going to find that you can step into this craft figuring out if you really like it or not. Now this is an adhesive. It actually is supposed to be an adhesive stencil, which I've used from Dollar Tree before and have had no issues. However, we do run into an issue with it in this video, so I'll show you. Right now I'm not using an adhesive to the adhesive part of it rather to hold it down. I'm actually just placing it with its backing on there onto my project. And I'm going to block off with some of this tape some of the areas I don't want to get inky. And that, that's a really great tip uh, that I recommend you do if you want to keep it very uh, clean <laughs> because sometimes you think you're not going to go over the stencil and you absolutely do. Especially with one of these stencils that has so many of these images on one. You want to make sure you do that. I'm using my grip mat here, which is kind of cheating, <laughs> so hopefully you forgive me, but um, I'm going to, in a second, not use the grip mat. Now, I'm going to go back in and use one of the sentiment stencils, and I'm going to actually outline it. You can do this one of two ways. I show you both in this video. The first one is outline it with a marker and then color it in, which is what I do. And then another way is just ink blend it with a ink blending foam tool or something like that. So you'll see both in this video. I'm going to go through and just outline the words dream big. I love the gems at the bottom, sort of those um, crystals. Um, I love the color theme and I'm making this all with my Dollar Tree products, aside from the ink, of course. Um, I did use some Distress Oxide inks for that. So you can't really see that dream big, but I'm gonna go in and take my black marker and I'm just going to color it in very, very simply. So now it looks like it almost could be a stamp, right? So that's one of the things that, you know, think about what you can find at your local, uh, stores, Dollar Trees, whatever you have in your local area that you can actually get a little bit outside the box and use for cards. Now this card I would consider good 
done, right? But we're going to add a little something extra. So you know if you've been hanging out with me for a little bit that I like to use the Dollar Tree uh, Glitter Nail Polish to add glitter accents to my cards. I love this tip because for one, it's super cheap. But for two, uh, you can put the glitter where you want it. I'm going to show you using this nail polish two ways. One, brushing it on, and two, doing it this way. So I'm going to add it to this little makeup sponge. And the reason I do that is because the makeup sponge will soak in some of that clear nail polish and leave the glitter to be placed onto the project. But the glitter stays. It doesn't go anywhere. And I love that little accent, of course, over the crystals. It makes it so super cute. And I would consider that card pretty much done. Now let's move on back to the stencils. I wanted to try the adhesive part here because I've used adhesive stencils from Dollar Tree in the past and they've worked great, but I feel like this is just a little bit too sticky. <laughs> so I'm using 110 pound cardstock. No, this is 100 pound cardstock from Accent Opaque. And when I placed it down and then tried to peel it up to kind of reposition it, it ripped my cardstock. So although I think these stencils are still a great buy, I don't really recommend you use the adhesive part because I was really kind of shocked that it ripped it up so bad. Uh, it wasn't, you know, wet. It wasn't watercolor cardstock or anything like that. So that was pretty disappointing. <laughs> just a thumbs down. But I kept it in there because I wanted to make sure I shared that with you. So now I'm just going to use the stencil as the stencil like any other stencil, right? But I'm going to pull out this Dollar Tree stencil brush. Now you can use this for painting, which I'm going to show you some, um, a little technique I do here in a second. Or you can brush the ink on just like a stencil brush. I'm not a fan of stencil brushing. I feel like it takes too long. I feel like I have to really build up that color, but some people really like it. And that's why I super sped this up because I just felt like it took me a little too long. So I prefer my Amazon blending brushes for this kind of technique. I think that's worth spending the few dollars to get those. Um, but I wanted to keep this in here because the stencil brush absolutely worked. So if you definitely are just starting out, you wanna see if you're gonna like these, this worked. Okay, so there's the finished result of that. Now I'm also gonna take this stencil brush and wet my um, ink, and then I'm gonna kind of, uh, I don't even know what this technique is called, but you like, why do I keep wanting to say stiffle? <laughs> I don't think that's it, but like you press down with the uh, with the brush and you're just kind of getting this bristly kind of look. That's it. And I love that background. I thought that was really cool and I'm not going to necessarily get that with an ink blending brush. So, you know, there is that. So I want to keep that in there for sure. All right, so let's take a break here and go back to the Dollar Tree and look at all the great storage options you have. If you admire craft rooms that have matching storage and you really would love that for yourself, I recommend going to the Dollar Tree. You're gonna get it at the fraction of the cost and they have these different sizes. Now I picked this color because I am partial to this. This sort of matches my craft room, but different depths and different sizes and you're really gonna be able to sort of get that coordinating look for your craft space on a budget. I also love these. I use these um, for embossing ink or embossing powder, and I love those. And then also they have some contact paper, which we know I've used in the past for some of my DIYs. So um, I wanted to pause here for a second and tell you about the contact paper idea. If you have a mat like I have right here, you can actually cut up a piece of that contact paper. Let's say you did like an eight and a half by 11 piece and place it right on your surface, and you can use that as a craft mat. So I just want to make sure I threw that in there as an additional idea. Okay, let's get back to this. Now, the next thing I want to show you are these sort of towels, but they almost feel like paper towels. Now, I've shown these in the past, not these particular ones, cheaper ones from the Dollar Tree, meaning like less quality, less quality, I guess. These are better quality. That's actually feel like towels. And I'm going to be able to use a lot less paper towels in my uh, crafting and that's really what I'm trying to do where I can I'm trying to minimize my waste and this is a really great option so I'm gonna use those you'll see me kind of pull them out throughout now let's talk about this holographic cardstock so you get six sheets two of the iridescent sort of uh, rainbowy holographic you have gold there's silver and then you have a blue and a green now this is really high quality cardstock not super 
excited about the curve in them, but you can flatten those out. But really great high quality uh, mirror card stock, and I would recommend it. And one of the reasons is sometimes we buy too much mirror card stock. <laughs> and by we, I mean me. I buy too much mirror card stock, and I don't really need all of that. So if you're just starting out, this is a great option to kind of test it out, see if you like it. Now I'm gonna emboss with it. I'm gonna emboss and die cut with it. Now before I show you the results of this incredible embossing, I'm gonna talk about an embossing folder class that I have coming up actually. It's really soon, February 17th. If you haven't registered, you can get the link in the description box below. I'd love for you to join. I'm making the price pay what you can as low as $1. I just want people to come and enjoy community and have fun with us. And um, you can have access to the replay, and there's going to be a great PDF for you to have for class if you can't make it live. You are still eligible for prizes, and we give out some incredible prizes. So we have some glue presses and a stamp wheel and all the goods. So I hope you can join. Again, that link will be below in the description box. Go ahead and get registered before class. Okay, back to our uh, embossing folder results. So check this out. What? It's so pretty. Oh my goodness. I'm so glad I picked the holographic cardstock to do with that. So I cut it down because I'm eventually going to make a card with that. I don't show it in this video, but really the only thing I need to add is a sentiment. Now I did check to see if this die cuts well, and yes, it die cuts like a dream. So it's perfect. Great cardstock, highly recommend. Maybe not in bulk, of course, but I would recommend checking that out if you're interested in kind of tip, dipping your toe into holographic cardstock. All right, what else did I find? These little droppers here are glass droppers. I'm gonna show you at the end of this segment what I use currently to do my alcohol inking, but I love that I can contain my alcohol into this container, and it's glass, and it's a really good quality of a dropper. So I'm gonna drop down onto some also Dollar Tree poster board here with some alcohol inks. I have my Amazon blower tool there. And I'm gonna show you, you do not have to spend a lot of money on getting some of these really fun techniques and getting some practice with them. I kept this whole part in here so I can kind of talk about some of these items. So yes, I am using Ranger uh, alcohol inks, but I've used inks I've tried out from Amazon, some very inexpensive alcohol inks. And a lot of them are marketed toward resin projects, which I don't know if that lessens the price, but I've really gotten some great deals on some alcohol inks, particularly if you are starting out. You don't have to get the whole set of things. This right here is one color. This is one color, well, it's one red color with some gold. And look at all the variants in there, and that's because I'm using a lot of alcohol to mix that around. Now this is what I was using, this dropper, but it has no container. So I, it was kind of, I had to you know, empty it, you can leave drips and this and that. So I recommend picking up some of those dropper uh, sets from uh, Dollar Tree. Okay, let's move on to some super cheap watercoloring. Now this is from the Dollar Tree 125. I'm gonna use the brush and I'm gonna use the ink, uh, the paint, on a watercolor piece of cardstock. Now I recommend taping down your watercolor cardstock. I feel like that lessens the warping. But I did wet my cardstock just a little bit before I started to drop in some of those uh, paints. Also, don't be lazy. <laughs> Go get a cup of water. It's gonna make it a little bit easier. Here I'm trying to use my little towel. But it worked, but I'm just saying it probably would have been faster if I could just dip it in some water. I'm gonna go through and give this about two layers. I watched someone on Instagram who gave us some really great watercolor tips and she said, wet your watercolors first before you start using them. It's gonna make them more saturated. So I'm passing along that tip to you because that really does work. And this is Dollar Tree watercolors. So I was very, very happy with the results of this. If you're, again, a new person starting out and you're like, I don't wanna spend all of this money for all of these watercolors, this is super cheap and you can get a beautiful rainbow background. Now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna take one of those stencils that has the words on it, so a sentiment. And I don't need a stamp here, I'm just gonna use the sentiment and I'm gonna um, mask off what I don't want to show. And I didn't wanna show the stars and that's it basically. And I just make sure I mask off so that I don't get any extra black ink. 
And this is the other way I told you that we can do it. Just put some black ink down and look at that. A beautiful sentiment right in the center. You can make your own homemade cards super fast and super fun. Once that's done, I'm going to take out some gold uh, of the uh, glitter nail polish and I'm actually going to almost paint over the word beautiful, leaving some of that glitter behind. This is a different technique than the one I did with the sponge. I feel like I get a little more control with this technique. I might just not get as much glitter. So I really love that one as well. Now let's go back to the Dollar Tree and I want to show you some additional ideas for you to think about. You can use their bags for uh, background cardstock, um, pattern paper, things like that. So they're really cheap in that regard too, especially if you get a big one like this. You can use that make some really pretty backgrounds with that kind of foiling. I also saw in the cake department that you can use this palette knife for when you're doing embossing paste. You're putting that onto your project and there was also a different shaped one. So that was an idea. I also love these storage items too from the Dollar Tree. I think these are really fun clear containers. You can put your embellishments in there, maybe you have some ribbon, things like that, and keep that really pretty into your uh, craft space. And then lastly, I saw some really cool holographic uh, paper. So like wrapping paper, you can use that for your cards as well. So I hope this was helpful for you to kind of get outside the box of some of the things that maybe you think you have to get and start trying out some new things at low cost. Uh, let me know what you think. What's your favorite thing that you've picked up that doesn't cost a lot and you've incorporated it into your craft space? I'd love to hear those ideas down below. All right, I will see you in the comments down below and in the next video. Bye-bye.